Hello everybody. <clears throat> I'm getting ready to go be aerial. So I thought I would start doing a live video. I'm wearing ball gown today. I can put the sleeves on, kind of like I had with Belle. It's too hot. So while I'm in this bathroom without the vent on, because I can't turn the vent on because then you can't hear me, I've decided to go ahead and just leave the sleeves down. But I'm gonna go ahead and pull my hair back here so I can put it into the wig and start getting ready to go here. But I hope you're all having an awesome weekend. It's C2E2 out in Chicago right now and I'm missing my friends so much because con season is upon us. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and braid on both sides here. That way I can flatten everything down and not look like I've got a weird shaped head. <laughs> Cause there's nothing worse than looking like you've got an alien head. It's hard to see if I finally found my little rig here that holds my phone while I do this stuff, which is nice because it was in the garage. But the problem is, is that my setup here doesn't really give me a place to hook it. So it kind of, if it was the choice of this little thing, you guys would all be looking at me from below like this and no face and just like this much costume or something because it doesn't want to hook on to anything properly. It's so annoying. But now it looks like I've got it all hooked up in a way that's at least somewhat presentable. All right, so I braided this side and it looks terrible, look at that. Definitely not something to do if you're going out. This is going under a wig, so it's not gonna matter so much. Hi, Eric, how are you? Blessings on your day as well. You guys still have snow out there? We have like 90 degree weather today, so it's hot and gross. Break this side too. So I'm kind of waiting for more people to jump on here so I can talk to you guys about some cool things that are happening. Hopefully you guys are all excited about what's going on on my page. I shared a trailer yesterday. I'm super excited about that. And who here is excited for Solo? I know I am. I can't wait to see that movie. I'm all like, who's this Kira and what's she about? Cause she's cute. I wanna cosplay her. <laughs> all right, that side's all braided too. So then I'm just gonna, oh, there's some flyaways, but whatever. Like I said, it's all going under the wig. All right, so I'm gonna pin this stuff up on top of my head. I just crisscrossed it in the back with that. Hope you can see that. <laughs> and then just gonna take some bobby pins and pin it up top like this. Make it nice and flat here. And then we're gonna start the makeup process. Yay for makeup! I already put my contacts in because, like I said last time, it's kind of creepy watching somebody put contacts in. It's more of a horror thing. I don't really, I'm not really into that kind of stuff. And then I'll put the wig cap on after I've done my makeup. So yeah, is that a flyaway? Of course it is, there's always one. There's always one. We'll put some hairspray on here. I love this stuff, this stuff's amazing. This uh, Tresemme spray, extra hold. This is like cement, I swear. I use it on all of my wigs. And then if I need to like fix something, all I really have to do is spray a little bit of water on the wig and use my hand to smooth things out. It looks gorgeous almost every time. But it hangs in the air and it tastes terrible. <laughs> Definitely don't use it and then use it on your hands and not wash your hands and then put contacts in your eyes. That's terrible. All right, so concealer time because I'm tired and because we all have our little blemishes. That's just the way life is, right? Cover them up. Pretend like they're not there, just like all of our dirty little secrets. <laughs> I'm just kidding, that's terrible. Or am I? Look, I, it's this, this is great, right? It should go like this. 
Cosplay success. I don't know what this is, but I like it. This is who I am. <laughs> In fact, I think I need a little bit more here. You know, there. This is who I am, like this. Frame this up and drink it in, people. Drink in this look, because this is how it, how it works. All right, like I said before, I'm not a beauty guru, so all y'all who are gonna write me PMs or comments saying like, you're not supposed to spread concealer with your finger. There's a reason why I do it with my middle finger when I'm on camera, and that's all I'm gonna say about that. <laughs> I'm just kidding, it really is because I'm lazy and because I'm pressed for time. Because my event starts at four o'clock and I've got 45 minutes to drive if I'm not gonna hit traffic. So anyway, so I wanted to talk to you guys about the Star Wars short, A Smuggler's Tale that I'm in. I had so much fun filming that movie. It's not even funny. We made a family filming that movie. The people that I work with there will always be close to me because we just had like a dirty, like in your face shoot that can't be compared. And we had so much fun. But furthermore, I'll be honest with you, when I first went on set, I thought, I don't know if we're gonna be able to get all this done in such a short period of time. I'd flown in from Arizona to Chicago. I'd gotten the role, like, the day before we moved, I drove up to Chicago my last day in town. I was highly pregnant and did this audition with Mark and got up there and thought to myself, why do I have to be moving right now? Like this, this is my bucket list. This is the thing I want more than anything in the world right now is to be able to do this role. And it wasn't until September. So I was like, I have to have this role. I have to figure it out. Well, he cast me. So then I had to figure out how I was gonna get back to Chicago and pay for the flight, et cetera, et cetera. Well, that all worked out. We went and we did it and it was perfect. But then, you know, being up there, I'm like, I just don't know because if we have to do reshoots or something, interject, I'm being cheap today and using the CoverGirl instead of my Revlon and here's my little sponge that I'm using to, uh, my blending sponge. So anyway, so I thought, well, we only have like, was it three days, four days to film this, this crazy beast of a film? And originally it was only supposed to be like 10 minutes long. It, it ended up being, I wanna say it's, it's over 25 minutes long, this film. And we hiked up Devil's Lake in Wisconsin. So we drove up to Wisconsin, up to Baraboo, and we hiked up Devil's Lake, which is a beast of a hike. I mean, it's like, no joke, I'm gonna use some of my, my items here to <laughs> show you what it's like. So it's it's all rock, all of it. It's not man-made structures or anything, but the rocks that you climb to get up, it's like a little path and they're all like this. You just have like these tiny little steps to climb up and it was like that um, all the way up to the top. And it took us an hour to climb up. So we started at like, six o'clock in the morning, the sun was just rising, hiked an hour, got up there at like seven. And there's like, just the most beautiful set you've ever seen. This beautiful lake, all of these turkey vultures flying off these cliffs, and I'm, I'm terrified of heights. I'm good if there's like a ledge, you know? I'm not good <laughs> if it's like, there's the edge, and I can't see where the edge leads to. I have to have like a good distance because I've got this fear that I'm like, I'm gonna run forward and I'm gonna fall off that edge, which is the stupidest thing ever because why would I ever run towards an edge if I'm afraid of heights, right? Whatever. So I'm like sitting on this, what looks like an edge, but it's not because it actually like tapers off into a, sort of a hill. And we get this beautiful shot um, of me just like sitting there sort of meditating, I guess, as the sun is rising. And then our director looks at me and he's like, okay, it's time to keep going. And I was like, keep going if I were at the top. He's like, no, we got, we got another like 15 minutes to hike. I was like, oh my God, I don't know if I can do this. And it was hot too. We finally get up to our shooting location and we shot all day long. Got to the point that like, oh, and I was sick too. I forgot that. I had like, 
had like a head cold or like a congestive flu. I was so sick. I needed DayQuil, something terrible. I was like, by the time we got to our shooting location, I was ready to like lay down on a rock and take a nap because I was so sick. But I was also having a blast. It like sort of didn't matter that I was that sick, but whatever. So anyway, long story short, we shoot the film and I can't tell you really anything about it except that it is about smugglers and it is in the Star Wars universe, but it's really good. It's really, really, really good. And just go take a look at the trailer. It's posted on my pages, like pretty much everywhere at this point. So if you haven't seen the trailer, go watch it because it's going to be really good and it comes out in May. So if I could get everybody to share, like comment on it if you're a big Star Wars fan and let us know, hi Pedro, how are you? And just, you know, let everybody know that this film is happening because it's gonna be free for you guys to watch. We're not charging anybody to watch it. Um, and we're just really excited to share the work that we did. And the cinematography is amazing. It's an all original score. It's original script, original characters, but you're gonna love it. This is not like some dinky little, oh, we had fun playing with blasters in the backyard kind of thing. No, we put a lot of hard work into this production. And I can't say too much about it, but what I will say, if things go well, it's not the last you'll see of my character. So, yes, there's something in it for me, but if you like Star Wars, you're gonna like this, I promise you. So, go take a look at the trailer, you know, comment, like, share. I would be so appreciative, and anybody else who loves Star Wars, I'm sure would love to know that this film is in existence and coming out in May. So that's what I have to say about that. And then, of course, Solo is coming out in May, which, after you've seen the film, you'll find out the relevance of that too, <laughs> as to why why we brought it out in May. Technically, I had nothing to do with that. That was all our fearless uh, production team's decision. I have no say in those types of things, but I can tell you as, as a Star Wars fan, I was like, oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> you smart, sneaky beast. Just... So, all right, put my powder on. And now we get into the nitty gritty dirty things that I have to do in order to make my face look like Ariel. And it is so hot in here. It's so, so hot in here. I'm telling you, like, I need a fan, but then you can't hear me. <laughs> Hi, Christopher. How are you? Oh, I'm so excited that you are going to share, and I'm most excited for you guys to see it. Like, that's that's the big thing. All right, some blush. All Ben Nye. Because Ben Nye is bomb. And you always almost have to do more blush than what you think would be normal and make yourself look like a clown because that's how it looks good when you've got a wig on, especially a big fire engine red like the one I have. All right, I wish I could say I was done with this. I'm not. So same color on the outside. I know that seems weird, right? It's not though, because that's how Ariel's makeup is, unless they changed it. But this is how I'm doing it, because this is what I know. All right, let's talk Last Jedi. I've been waiting forever to talk Last Jedi. I've kept my mouth shut. It's been long enough. So everybody who was like, no, no spoilers, I haven't seen it yet. Too bad, this is the moment we're talking Last Jedi. Who liked it? Give me a thumbs up if you loved it, liked it. If you thought it was I, if you thought it wasn't terrible and you don't want to throw it in the bin, give me a thumbs up. And let me know in the comments why you liked it. What did you like about this movie? So if you didn't like it, also let me know in the comments why you didn't like it. Because I would love to discuss some things. All right, so I'm gonna get into my rant now about it. You love TLJ? I liked it. Now, I'm going to preface this by saying one thing and one thing only. I see all of these Star Wars segments, and that's what I'm going to call them as segments, separate entities. I do not look at original trilogy and say that's good with the prequels. Nope, prequels are a separate thing. Totally separate entity. Um, yes, it falls in the same storyline, but it's just, it's just different. So, starting with um, Force Awakens, same thing. That's how I feel about it. 
totally separate entity. Um, yes, again, it falls into the same storyline, same universe, separate entity. So Last Jedi, guess what? Falls right into what I expected them to do for where the story is probably gonna go. Um, my sister and I got into a big fight about Luke's little, some people loved that, some people hated it. She hated it. Here's her reason why. She says that she doesn't think that Luke would ever do something like that. What do you think? Do you think Luke would ever do this? I don't know. I'm, the jury's out for me on that. I think, I think that this Luke would. Do I think that original Luke from New Hope would do that? No, probably not. I mean, that wasn't his style, but what is his style is getting at his nephew. <laughs> and his nephew, who's a little brat of, you know, I mean, like he, he acts like a teenager and stuff. What's he gonna be most upset about? He's gonna be upset about being taunted and what better way to taunt him than brushing your shoulder off? So in that respect, I felt like it fit the character and the theme of what was going on. So Christopher says, still open to all the new directions and enjoying the new planets and scenes. I agree with that. I think all of the new planets are interesting. I didn't like Canto Bite. I thought that that whole section was very long and unnecessary. And you know what? I think that these lashes might be long and unnecessary. <laughs> Just kidding. You think Luke was jaded, and he did a great job of expressing it all the way to the end. No, I agree. I think he was very, he was exactly right. Like, jaded is a great way to describe it, because he tried to do something great. He was trying to keep the universe and check the balance and check when he created that school. And then, unfortunately, things just went crazy, you know? And... He blames himself. What I did think was also very interesting was the the difference in storytelling between um, Luke's point of view and Kylo's point of view. And I thought that was pretty neat to watch, like, um, Ray's reaction to how each side was told. That was pretty neat. Um, isn't this awesome? I felt like one eyelash, no eyelashes. <laughs> you think the shoulder brush was appropriate because Mark Hamill didn't have a problem with it? Oh, I agree. I mean, if Luke, if um, Mark Hamill, we're just going to call him Luke because Luke is synonymous with Mark. Um, if he was okay with it, I'm okay with it. I agree with that as well because, after all, he is the one playing the character. So if he's all right with it, then we all should be all right with it too. And we're not the writers. We don't know where they're going to take this story. We don't know what their thoughts are, or um, even even the his some of the history stuff hasn't even been told yet. We don't know everything. So I think people need to kind of like chill out. Again, this is sort of a intermittent storytelling situation. <laughs> They're setting up for the next film. So I don't know why we're all butthurt and concerned about what's going to happen and why things are the way they are. It's, you know not our problem I guess and you know what if we hate the next installment then we hate the next installment then then we can discuss that then but I think everything will come together in the end it will all right let's see if this is gonna gonna stick I hate putting on fake eyelashes uh, if I could clap right now I would I hate it they are the worst they are absolutely the worst but I have to because if I don't I look like I have no eyelash <laughs> With the wig. I mean, in my normal everyday pictures and stuff like that, those are my, my, my lashes. But these, why did I say that like that? Those are my, 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 my lashes. Somebody do like a remix of that. <laughs> Total setup for the next film, but allowed for a good ending for itself, which works for me. I agree, Chris. It's like, it was just a setup. And I, the other thing that I thought was very interesting was the little boy. Because as we know, there was a discussion and announcement that uh, Ryan Wilson, um, or Ryan Johnson, is going to be directing some films that are going to continue outside of the universe that we currently know. So I thought it was really cool that they began to incorporate that. Like, is that little kid that we saw use the force at the end to pull the broom off the wall? Is he going to be the next storytelling? you know, aspect of, of where this is 
headed. So I think that's pretty cool. Hi, Bob. The second film is always the darkest and they haven't hinted on Leia passing. We won't have any idea yet. You know what? When she does pass, because they're going to inevitably have to do that. And they were probably going to have to do that story-wise anyway. I think we're all just going to lose it. And okay, let's talk about the Leia Force sensitivity, force usage moment. That was another thing that a lot of people didn't like. I liked it. You know why? Damn it, she worked hard on this film. She worked hard on every film that she ever did with this, you know, universe. She was Leia. Are you really going to cut out any second of her being on screen when she just passed away and everybody's still like not accepting that really? I mean, like it's hard to not have her around because especially at the convention, she was one of the most predominant people besides Mark. Constantly working with fans, constantly talking to people. I mean, like I have so many friends that have hugs from her, like genuine hugs on camera from from Carrie Fisher to like suddenly just be like, yeah, we're not gonna put her scene in or we're gonna cut it down to like milliseconds. Really? Is that is that what you're gonna do? You're just gonna decide to not use the footage? No, you're gonna put every single second you have of her in that movie that you can. So yes, was it long? Yeah, absolutely. Did you hold your breath and go, oh, I don't know, this is a really uncomfortable scene. It looks sort of awkward. I don't know what to do here. Yeah, of course, but you know what? Maybe you're supposed to feel that way. Like, is this the moment that they're gonna kill her off? Is this the moment that you're really gonna see her passing? We didn't know, but then there's this moment when she actually uses the force to save herself and it makes that freaking canon, guys. Like, that's canon now. All, all this time we've been talking about how there's a possibility that Leia is force sensitive and, you know, that she alludes to it through some of her talks and things through other movies or even extended universe books and comics and things like that. But this actually makes this 100%. We saw it. it. Live action, we saw it. There's no debating it. Like, Leia is force sensitive and it is what it is and there's no more to talk about it. So I think that that's really awesome. Leia was wonderful on screen, far better than the CG Leia in Rogue One. I didn't mind the CG Leia in Rogue One, mainly because she was younger, you know? Um, I thought they did a good job with it in Rogue One for what they needed. It was so short, it really didn't, it didn't bother me. Look at how lovely that looks. Force pull, the unheard of power. Exactly. Well, yeah, it is the unheard of. But on the other hand, how cool is that? Because you've got lots of other characters that have powers that we, you know, don't have much to go off of. Like, let's talk Plagueis and the ability to, like, not die. <laughs> um, okay, one thing that bothered me. And you know what? It didn't bother me until somebody said something about it. And let's see what you guys think while I try to fix this eyelash that is just not wanting to stick on here. Okay, so a friend of mine who went and saw the film the same night that we did, and we went again like a couple days later or whatever, but he noticed the first time around there really wasn't a lightsaber battle. There was a battle. There was no lightsaber battle. There was no two lightsabers clashing against each other. That really bothered him. That made him hate the movie. That one thing was enough for him to say, I write this off. Now what I will say, that throne room battle, awesome, amazing. That choreography, oh my God, nail biting, like holy shit, yes, this is what I wanna see in a Star Wars film. So I feel like it made up for it. I almost asked myself if there had been like any actual like lightsaber clashes against each other, especially in that scene, it probably would've taken away from it. So I don't know what you guys think about that. No lightsabers clashing against each other. Also, sorry Kylo cosplayers, your guy is a little dumb. <laughs> How would he not notice that that was not the real Luke? I mean, they clear, it was like clear as day that that was what was going to happen because they were pretty much saying it from, you know, the middle of the movie when it came to light that there was projection between the characters, you know, like Ray and Kylo having the discussion through the force, seeing each other. Obviously, that was going to be something that was going to come 
down the road later and then of course that's exactly what Luke did was use that but then here's the question Snoke says he's the one who did that but yet Luke used sort of an astral projection of himself to fight Kylo we haven't really seen that before have we seen that before no we haven't not in that capacity so is Luke Snoke Discuss amongst yourselves on that one. <laughs> Force pull. She isn't grounded. The ship has more mass if she reaches to grab it. Well, I don't know what I would call it. I don't know what hers is. She has. She just has this innate ability to pull on everybody's heartstrings. How about we, we say that? It was uncomfortable, though. All right, so now I have my lashes on. That looks much better, but now I have to fix what I had to mess up in order to make it look somewhat presentable. Okay. So, a little bit of red here, a little bit of red here. What else have we got saying here? So those were the, the big things I think that people really didn't care for. I felt like Canto Bite was just really, really, really long. Uh, Benicio, holy crap, you wanna talk about some characterization there? He played a character better than anybody in the movie, I think. That's just maybe my personal opinion, but his little ticks and stuff from an actor's standpoint, that was a master class in acting. He's so good, so, so good. I wanna see more about his character. I wouldn't mind a spinoff movie talking about him. The Codebreaker is who I'm talking about, if uh, Master Codebreaker is <laughs> confused about who, who exactly I'm speaking of. But yeah, he's amazing, and I would love to see more of his character. All right, I need eyeliner. There it is. Elf. It says intense ink eyeliner. It's intense. Do, do, do. So intense. So is this discussion, Star Wars is always super intense. So yeah. Um, what else about Last Jedi? I know everybody's probably like, well, what do you think of Rey? I like Rey no matter what. One thing that I didn't care for was the lack of explanation for where the hell she was in the mirror situation. I forget what that place is called, where Luke lives. That was weird. And I wanna know what this whole thing was. So I have a friend who believes that maybe it has something to do with the hand that we have not seen in a very long time. You know, Luke's hand. Is she a clone of Luke? from the hand, and that's what this is. And maybe that's why we don't know who her parents are. Who knows? All right, let's get to the big one. Rey and Kylo ship. I like it. So long as they're not something gross. <laughs> so long as they're not like, I don't know, cousins or something, or brother and sister. Then I'm, then I'm okay with it. Because he's abusive. That's the one thing is that like, you're nothing, you're nothing. To me, you're not. Like, actually, it's you're not to me. But that, oh, I don't know. That sort of made me sick to my stomach because I was like, girl, don't fall for some abusive relationship. That's not okay. All right. A lipstick on. Bottom eyeliner. What do you guys think? Would you ship that? you ship a Kylo Ray, a Raylo, as they call it. Yes, they call it a Raylo for good reason. What am I doing here? This color. I forgot which one was my eyebrows. All right, so I have to, I have brown hair, obviously. Let's do Sesame Street here. Brown hair. Red hair. <laughs> I have to make my hair red. Just the eyebrows. So I'm gonna tap this. Just a little tap, little happy taps. There are no mistakes here. Just happy little accidents. Put that on the eyebrow. Like that. Is that a happy little accident, that little thing? I'm walking around like this all the time, just like, look at smug, smug Ariel. She's got her eyebrow raised, she's like, hmm, I don't know about that. 
Good thing it's easily blendable. Maybe I have to make the other side look like that too. <laughs> Little girl eyebrow raise. Whitney, you're so stupid sometimes. All right. And then I've got this lovely little brush, also from e.l.f. I'm so rough when I put on makeup, I'm like, Rah! abusing myself. There we go. There, now I've got red eyebrows. And that looks weird, because I don't have my, my helmet head on. <laughs> so Raylo, come on, tell me your, tell me your thoughts on Raylo. I get to be Ray tomorrow, actually, but I'm not going to do a get ready video. I'll probably do a video of like when I get where I'm supposed to be and going to a charity event because I have to get up at five in the morning to get ready, you guys. I'm going to die. I'm going to be so tired. I get up at like five every, almost every other day. So for skating or whatever, this, this is done for. I need new wig caps. <laughs> All right, wig cap on. my bottom eyeliner. Where are you, bottom eyeliner? There you are. My little black stub eyeliner. Like that. No thoughts on Raylo, huh? Nobody wants to fight me on that. How about Ray Poe and Ray Finn? I used to ship Ray Finn. Now I kind of am all about the sadistic behavior of one, you know, Kylo Ren. <laughs> Maybe I've got problems. <laughs> Maybe I need to talk to somebody about that. That's what you guys are for, though. All right, where is my mascara? I don't know where anything is. I have no clue anymore. I take things out. I move things and then I can't find it anymore. <laughs> it's all right here. It's just a matter of where. I need my eyeliner. Oh, maybe in my BB-8 box. That would be it. That would make sense. My Too Faced Better Than Sex <laughs> mascara. This stuff is amazing though. I just touch this up here. Why do we always do this when we put on eyeliner and mascara? I try not to. I can't help it. No, I think Ray Raylo is is a thing for me because they actually are like equal on power level, I guess. All right. I recently restyled her. She looks so much better. Tucking the ears. Tuck the ears because they are a signifying feature on your face. And now we get to do this lovely task of shoving body pins inside of my head to make this stay and look good. All right, I hate these pens. All right, at the temple tab, going upwards this way, like this, okay? Holding the tab down next to your ear. Then back in the back tab the neckline across. Same on the other side. Because you can do like I do, and you could do like me. I've had Greatest Showman stuck in my head now for days. It won't end, it won't stop. I mean, people just keep singing it, and it gets in my head even more. It's a never ending tribulation, I guess. All right, so another one kind of closer to the ear. 
going up sort of behind the ear. That's the one that can give headaches to people, but it's necessary on this wig to do. Because if I don't, it flies up. favorites. I got it at Claire's, rest in peace. <laughs> All right, so I take a little bit on the side and sort of pull it down underneath the ear tab. See, it gives me the illusion of a red hairline. And then a little bit over the top so you can't see the bobby pin tricks of the trade. Do the same thing over here. So what do you all have planned for this lovely Saturday afternoon? Probably evening for some of you. Maybe even Sunday. I don't know. Let me know where you're at. Where are you at in the world? This side has been getting kind of ratchet. That just fell down my chest. <laughs> This is having a problem. There we go. Whew. Okay, now we got to do the back neck areas. I don't know. I, keep, I need to show Harrison Indiana how to keep his hat in the last crusade instead of a staple gun. Did he use a staple gun? Are you serious? That's terrifying would never use a staple gun. Use a hat pin. Hat pin is much more efficient. I don't know if he had the hair though to hold a hat on like that. That's terrifying. A staple gun? Like what's wrong with people? I do not envy old Hollywood. And that really wasn't even old Hollywood. That's, that's crazy. No, 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 no. I mean, yes, go to the extreme lengths, but not that extreme. That's craziness. All right, where are we at on time here? I might have to just take extra bobby pins with me to make sure that everything looks good. All right, I'll spray this down a little bit, including my face. And the reason why is because then this sort of acts like a little bit of a shellac and it keeps my face from melting off when I'm in the hot sun because I'm gonna be out in the hot sun. All right, ready? Here we go. <gasps> Still tastes terrible. <laughs> And these bristles spin and they're made out of metal and they're lovely for combing wigs because they don't pull on the fibers as much. So if you need to restyle your wig, 
send me questions, I'll be happy to answer you on how to do it because there's nothing sadder than somebody spending a lot of money or even a little bit of money on a cosplay wig. Like this wig I think cost me $30 and I styled it myself. So there's nothing worse than somebody spending even more than that on a wig to then have them destroy it because they don't know how to take care of it. It's just unfortunate. You know, take care of your wigs. They're plastic. We don't need any more like extra plastic floating in our oceans and stuff. So take care of your wigs. And also I'm wondering if anybody knows anything holding like if that place where you can recycle them for something. I don't know what. Ariel holding her breath. That was funny. On, on land nonetheless. <laughs> ah, that's funny. I like that. Ariel holding her breath. Okay. I'm holding my breath if this dress fits. Because Lord knows I need to go to the gym. And don't any of you say like, oh no, you don't. I'm not saying that for attention. I'm saying it because I had a baby and I, it's just the way it is. These dresses are tight <laughs> and that's okay. They're tighter than they were and I just need to go to the gym. So, all right, there we go. And then Dingle Hopper and Sebastian. Squeak, squeak, he doesn't squeak. I wish he did. And then my uh, Dingle Hopper for pretending to comb your, your wig. Don't actually comb your wig with this. It's not a good idea. So that's that. All right, everybody. I'm gonna head off because I need to rush now out the door like Cinderella trying to make it away from the ball at midnight. But I hope you all have a wonderful Saturday. I will do my best tomorrow to do a live video either while I'm coming back from my event or on my way to, um, but like I said, I have to get up at five in the morning so I won't be able to show you guys how I get ready with Ray. But I'll be able to, um, because I think I'm going to do Hero Ray tomorrow, so we're talking TLJ costume, but I will be able to get on and sh like at least talk to you all a little bit tomorrow as Ray. But have a wonderful Saturday, and we'll see you all hopefully tomorrow. Tune in. Don't forget, go watch the, the trailer for um, Scoundrels, uh, Star Wars story, Smuggler's Tale, because it's on my page. It's like everywhere, all over my social media. I've been blasting it like crazy since it dropped yesterday. The movie's coming out in May, you guys, in May, right before Solo. So we're definitely releasing it before Solo. We should know within two weeks the exact date of when this movie is going to drop. It's going to be free for you to watch. It's part of the Star Wars universe. It was so much fun to make, and I cannot wait for you guys to see it. But thank you again so much for tuning in, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Or shall I say a fantastic day? Bye guys.